In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be awesome fucking animals that do sports and shit. And they were born, the wild animals. God called upon them to bring joy to the humans that were to come, and they agreed, bringing us the ultimate triad of game. First, the wild animals engaged in a battle of races, go-karting to see which one could be the true king of the jungle. Second, the animals showed their skill and dexterity in the art of sports, battling with the one and only King Croc for the title of Top Cucumber. And finally, we see the Lone Giraffe Ginger on a quest to save the universe from total damnation. In each of these titles, we learn of beauty, death, love, destruction, violence, hatred, and most importantly, the meaning of life. So allow me to show you these works of art, and why you should all purchase them right now. Firstly, starting with... Wild Animal Racing was first released on May 7th, 2016 to glowing reviews, and still has a dedicated and thriving fanbase. With this first release, we are introduced to the glorious racists that we will follow, throughout the rest of our Wild Animal Trilogy. Ginger the Giraffe, who has a long neck, mocks the short, and is anti-Semitic. Hugo the Hippo, a known fat ass, has an IQ of 125, drives a Ford F-150. Zirconda the Zebra, has a stupid first name, is the worst character, and makes me feel funny. Linda the Lioness, who shops at Whole Foods, is vegan, and hates trans people. Ronaldo the Rhino, who plays soccer for Brazil, is wanted dead or alive in five countries, and enjoys long walks on the beach. And finally, Egbert the Elephant, cousin to Qbert, beats up the zebra, terrorist. Now that you're up to speed with the current wild animal cast, let's talk about the gameplay. Wild Animal Racing is known for its fast-paced, action-packed, boner-tickling gameplay. This testicle-tugging gameplay is achieved through the clever use of controls, graphics, and music that all come together to create a cesspool of awesomeness with a population of one. You. First, let's discuss the controls. I don't even think these controls are considered controls. These controls really make you feel like a wild animal who is racing. They are precise and perfect in every way, and I have never had any issue with them. Never ever ever. Next up are the graphics. When you think of realistic graphics, what games do you think of? Cyberpunk? Fortnite? Roblox mayhaps? Well I hate to break it to you, but Wild Animal Racing has better graphics than all of those combined. You may be surprised to hear this, but the footage you are watching right now is actually a scene from Wild Animal Racing. It was never actually recorded. Now look at this scene. Or this one. Like really, how are you expected to decipher this from reality? Now look at this one. It's just too realistic. So realistic that in fact there have been many theories that this game, like Polybus, was created by the CIA to capture the young and take their sweet mind juices away. But I don't think Paul Bird would ever do such a thing. Finally the music. Holy shit the music. Throw away all your Weezer CDs. This is the soundtrack that you're going to be listening to for the rest of your life. With such bangers such as Iceland. Mystic.
and Paris. You really can't go wrong with any of the songs in this game. Going hand in hand with the music and gameplay, we can see a myriad of realistic racetracks such as hills, underwater, Holland, and Paris if it was awesome. Going hand in hand in hand with the music, gameplay, and epic tracks, we can see many collectible movies that are awarded to only the best wild animal racing players. Now I'm not going to spoil these movies for you, but let's just say you should keep the kitties at home for these. You really can't go wrong with anything in this game. Similarly to Flying Gorilla, Wild Animal Racing is going to the best games of all time ever that define society and the world as a whole category, putting it very strongly in the S tier. Now moving on from Wild Animal Racing, we have... Wild Animal Sports Day was released on August 31st in 2018 to more raving reviews from dedicated fans of the original Wild Animal Racing. But does this game really stack up against the glory of its predecessor? Yes it does. Wild Animal Sports Day, in my objectively correct opinion, takes everything the original game did and improves upon it tenfold. The controls are somehow even tighter than before, the graphics more realistic, and music even more awesomer than ever. In this installment, we see the animals fighting against one common enemy, the mighty King Croc who has instated high taxes on the wild animals. To dethrone King Croc, the animals must beat him in eight extreme sports, saved only for the most daring of animals. These sports are... Tennis Jumping over stuff Darts Drowning Skiing Jumping over higher stuff Jumping once more And of course, dancing. Each one of these games were wonderfully constructed and made, making each one fun to play individually or in a challenge mode where you compete against the mighty King Croc to beat him at his own game and steal back your banana horde. But be warned, if you fail to beat King Croc, he will torment you in ways that cannot even be comprehended by us mere mortals. This challenge mode is really where the game shines, as it lets you play all of the modes in a marathon while competing against King Croc for a better score. This, along with the Steam achievements, adds so much replayability to the game, making it well worth the $5 or so you will, WILL, spend on this game. New movies are also added, allowing players to feel more rewarding for playing this masterpiece of a game. And, once again, pants are completely optional. <laughs> Wild Animal Sports Day is a game that can only truly be experienced by playing it yourself. So I'm going to shut up now and let you guys go buy this right now in the Wild Animal Triple Pack. Now moving on to the final game of today's discussion. The Amazing Shrinking Giraffe is a pretty big shift in tone and gameplay from the other Wild Animal games. In The Amazing Shrinking Giraffe, you exclusively play as Ginger, who has now been given the powers of a god to rid the universe of snakes, who because of some nerd bullshit have now attempted to take over the world, and it is up to Ginger to fucking kill all of them, save the world, and probably get laid. Now The Amazing Shrinking Giraffe is a pretty complicated game, so let's start from the top. The main gameplay of The Amazing Shrinking Giraffe is nothing like the other two wild animal games. Instead of being able to pick from a myriad of characters, you can now only play as Ginger, Instead of engaging in some kind of sporty activity, you're now shrinking and expanding and jumping onto other planets to completely rid them of all their snakes. Now I have no idea how much black tar heroin Paul Bird was on when he was making this game, but holy shit, this is awesome. The controls are amazingly responsive, the graphics are unbeatable, the music is good, yada yada yada, everything I've said about the other wild animal games still applies here. And somehow, Paul Bird was able to add in like a hundred billion planets for you to explore and walk around on. Each planet feels like it was handmade by Paul Bird's sweaty palms, making them all a joy to explore around. So yeah, throw away all your open world games, the new Legend of Zelda shit compared to this. Tragically, however, Paul Bird did not bring back the movies for this installment. 
but who needs movies when the game is already perfect? The only way to truly experience this game, or any of the ones I've talked about, is to go play them yourselves. I highly recommend you go steal your mom's credit card and purchase the Wild Animal Triple Pack on Steam. Trust me, it's the best $12 you will ever spend in your life. That reminds me of one more thing. Paul Bird is a British game developer who is mostly known for the games that I've just reviewed. He has also come up with a couple other games like this one, and this one, and this one if it ever comes out. Paul Bird is released with Puzzle and Wild IQ Test. I can't stand to wait any longer. Paul Bird has been given a sort of god status among his fans, likely due to him being able to release some of the greatest pieces of content and entertainment in recent years. Paul Bird has also dipped his toes into making novels with his book of the Plex Solution, aka the Prophecy of the Virgin Moonshine. This book might as well be considered the Bible, but I think it deserves its own video. Paul Bird also has an extensive wiki page, detailing many parts of Paul Bird's life that I didn't have time to discuss here. So I recommend you go look at that wiki page and make sure to tell them that I sent you. The games in the Wild Animal Trilogy are games that must be experienced by everyone at least once in their lives. Throughout playing all of these games, I have learned much about the universe, people, and most importantly, myself. I implore all of you to go purchase the Wild Animal Triple Pack and to purchase Puzzling Wild IQ Test the second it comes out. He who confirms all this says, yes, I will purchase the Wild Animal Triple Pack along with any other upcoming Paul Bird games. May the grace of the Lord Paul Bird be with the believers. The end. Wait a minute, hold the phone, breaking news. Puzzling Wild IQ Test did come out the day before releasing this video. And of course, I went and purchased it, and it's just as good as I thought it'd be. So please go purchase it right now, along with the Wild Animal Triple Pack. Thank you.